What's up, everyone? Welcome to Power Play with CJ. I want to focus in on what is going to keep the Minnesota Wild from being a legitimate Stanley Cup contender this season. And um, I just want to point out uh, Phil Housley will be coaching his first NHL game in Minnes- as an assistant coach. Trotsky stole his job um, tomorrow night or Thursday night tomorrow night against uh, against Minnesota for Nashville. And uh, I was just looking at the 2003 Minnesota Wild team in the conference finals. How's he got traded from Chicago to Toronto that year? It would have been pretty cool if they traded him to Minnesota instead, and he joined that team. And you know, I'm not gonna say it would have made that much of a difference. I mean, it was 40, 41, uh, but and it's his most crowning achievement uh, during his 2002, 2003 season. If you read Theo Fleury's book, Playing with Fire, was uh, him and Tyler Honiston essentially saving Theo Fleury's life after Theron got himself in a. Um, precarious situation in Columbus. Let's just leave it at that. Go out and read the book yourself. It's an amazing read. It's honestly one of my favorite books of all time. That and The Old Man in the Sea by Ernest Hemingway, but that's neither here nor there. What's holding the Minnesota Wild back, they have high-end American players in Suter and Parisi. They got some amazing young talent in Grandland, Coyle, Zucker, Rodin, all those guys. are They're awesome. But What's keeping them from being a contender is the way they screwed up the 2004 through 2008 drafts. Example, A.J. Thielen in 2004. They had Drew Stafford, Travis Zajac, Mike Green, and Corey Schneider on the board. Hypothetically, let's play devil's advocate to draft Travis Zajac. He slides in, he's your second line center behind Corey Boone. That's a round peg and a round hole. I, I mean, let's just say they, they hit on one of these guys. 2005, they take... Benoit Pouliot, who, you know, as a Bruins fan, we know what he was like, with Carey Price on the board. You put Carey Price between the pipes, I know he's been inconsistent, but when he's on, he's he's an upper long goal in the NHL, when it's simple. 2006, they took, uh, was it James Shepard over uh, Brian Little, uh, over for Winnipeg, I mean, he's a, he's a good player, and I mean, Shepard's been uh, inconsistent, to say the least, in the NHL, and hurt, and it was sure as well. He was in San Jose's like fourth line. I mean, he missed pretty much two full seasons with an off-ice injury. 2007, they took Colton Gillies and mismanaged his development. Max Pacioretty was on the board. Uh, and then 2008, they took uh, was it Kuma with uh, John Carlson still on the board. So, I mean, any one of those guys, you know, you plug in Pacioretty or Carlson, you know, say Jack, one of those guys, this team is a legitimate contender for the Stanley Cup. You know, maybe the standings change so they don't get all the young players, but, I mean, I'd take my chances with Travis Ajak over, um, you know, A.J. Thielen in the 4 draft. I mean, then you look at the way it all sorts itself out. Again, any one of those guys is a major difference maker that, um, you know, maybe you talk about cap-wise, you know, if they have one of those guys in the system, maybe they don't go out and sign have uh, then train up a Heatley and don't have that contract to worry about. So there's, you know, some money to play around with. And I think, again, any one of those guys puts them over the top. And I think this Minnesota team, they have a good mix of veterans and young players they have, um, you know, and the, the young players are, when they, going into that offseason, when they signed Suter and Breeze in 2012, I said they were two to three years away from contending. The, unless they signed Suter and Parisi, which was funny. I said that in May of 2012. Pretty good. But um, I said, you know, these young guys got to come into their own. You know, Coyle and Zucker, Gramlin, Brodeen. And they're doing that. They're, def- they're definitely doing that. Um, having Suter and Parisi in the mix expediated that process. But until they all hit their strides in the next, you know, 18, in the next 6 to 18 months, um, it's, they're not going to be a contender. I think once those guys, again, hit their strides, they'll be, um, they'll be in good shape in Minnesota. will be a perennial contender. But uh, right now they're a mid-level playoff team. And I'm, not, I'm saying that as you know, someone that's because of course I'm rooting for them, you know, to to do well and, and do you know, it's, when you get guys on the team that rock power play with CJ, you got to root for them to do well, you know, it's, as a, as a businessman. But uh, you know, it's uh, it's going to be intriguing to watch. You know, I'm I'm looking forward to see how they because they've had some very good drafts in my opinion, not just those the aforementioned 2010, 2011 drafts, but I think 2012 will will pay dividends with them between Dumba and uh, Boston College's Adam Gilmore, who's an amazing player. But I'll see what happens. Anyway, that's our next episode of the Power Play with CJ on Phil Housley going back to Minnesota and uh, what's keeping the Minnesota Wild from being a legitimate Stanley Cup contender. Stay tuned for more episodes for the season and beyond. Later, guys.